Uh, John Gilstrap has returned from his tour of Europe. He was visiting Paris and then uh, Normandy, which was pretty cool. John, welcome back. Nice to be back. Good to have you. It's always good to be home. And you're flying solo today, too. Mr. Harvey is uh, not with us uh, this morning. He's, I'm sure, doing important things. One can only assume. Yes. <laughs> Now, we have, uh, over the course of this last week or so, because of the Apple Harvest Festival, which is so huge uh, around here in the area, uh, been meeting many of the folks who are responsible for putting on the festival, taking part in the festival, uh, have been uh, previous queens or the current reigning queen in the festival, and today we meet the new queen of the festival, too, here. So let's welcome in our guest, uh, Abby McBee. Good morning. Do you have by Abigail or Abby? Either one works. All right, we'll call you Abby. Okay. I have a niece named Abby, who is also an Abigail, <laughs> so that's nice, too. Uh, also, uh, Courtney Funk, who is the vice president of the board for the Mountain State Apple Harvest Festival and in charge of the coronation of the Queen. Good morning to you as well. Good morning. I should put up your proper microphone. <laughs> yeah, I guess they must have switched those, but, but you're good. No, you're fine. Uh, so, anyway, welcome in. I hope you avoided okay. Apple Harvest Drive on your way here. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thankfully. Yeah. What a mess, huh? I know. Mm -hmm. Certain irony there that it's Apple Harvest Drive. <laughs> Cut it is, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. We avoided yeah. it. Yeah. We did. <laughs> Not lost on me at all, I guess. Right. Yeah. So, uh, uh, tell me uh, about this uh, whole coronation thing. Uh, what are you, are you looking forward to? This. I am so excited for the coronation that will be tomorrow evening. It has been a while since I've been to a coronation. I'll be quite honest. I've been involved with the festival. Well, they don't pop up that often if you think they about it. They don't. No, they're not that common, especially right. here in West Virginia. We don't sure. have those too often. But I've been involved with the festival for a very long time. And the last coronation I went to was probably before COVID-19. So I'm oh. very excited. And this is my own coronation too, which is exciting in itself. <laughs> tell, tell us about yourself. I'm Abigail McBee. I'm a West Virginia native. I'm from Hedgesville, West Virginia. I've been involved with the festival, we always say from birth. My parents were on the board, so I got to help them with the parade, with Baby Appleseed, and when I wasn't helping behind the scenes, I was a member of the court. I was a court jester, and I served as a junior maiden, and I'm very excited to be back as maid elect. Are you related to Doug or Jeff? I don't believe so. No? Okay. No. Just curious. <laughs> Probably somewhere along the line. There's a lot of McBees around here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, very nice. So uh, the whole process of the coronation, how long does this take to plan? Uh, so after the festival, we'll start looking at gowns and mm -hmm. prepping the applications that we'll release in January. So it is a year-long process. Um, oh, yeah. We, we work all year long to prepare. Yes. Yeah. Tell yes. us about the gown. It's, oh, I can't tell you about her gown. <laughs> Correct. Uh, because that's the best kept secret, right? It, it is. Um, but we, uh, our gowns right now come from Deja Vu on a Mount Airy. Um, you know, you never know when that could change. Mount Airy, um, Maryland? Mount Airy, Maryland, yep. So um, these gowns are sight unseen in person to us as well. Typically these are online. We use a quinceanera gown, so you get that nice full ball gown effect. Um, and lots of lots of tool and things <laughs> underneath to get to their shoes on usually. Mm -hmm. um, but these gowns are, are just absolutely stunning, very intricate, and no queen's gown is alike. Um, so they truly become almost like an heirloom for them. So it's a very fun process. Uh, the gowns are, are handmade, so when we order them, um, they almost have to be in production because we announce our queen and her court in May, um, if not in late April. And so we need months for the gown to be made to ship into us, and then it is altered to perfection. So, and yeah. Abby, you are on the cover of the... Apple Harvest Festival magazine. Yes. Here. What's it like to be on the cover of a magazine? It is so exciting. I have to say, this was my first ever cover shoot, being on a cover of a magazine. Yeah. And so I can check that off the bucket list. Where, where is this shot? This, uh, this that is at Butler's shirt. Farm. Yes. Butler's Farm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I noticed there's a stack of three apples beside you. Yes. So was there a big argument as to how many apples should be beside you? We actually lost an apple in you the process an of oh, shooting no. of this. It, 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 it rolled down into the creek. I almost went in after it, but I was... Uh, it really rolled down into the creek, but I no you know, uh, Thankfully, Miss Karen Vinoy was not too upset with me that her an apple rolled into the yes. creek there at the farm. So an apple was harmed. <laughs> yes. An apple was harmed. An apple gave its life for your reign of terror to all the apple kingdom. Hope you're happy. Yeah. Uh, what kind of apples are those? Do you know? Did they tell you that like a red delicious there? It looks like a standard red, red delicious. Red delicious, delicious yes. Uh, now, I want to know about your crown uh, because we have the, the current queen has, has been on a couple of times. And first and foremost, the crown stays with you, correct? Yes. So each queen, they get their own crown to mm -hmm. have and to hold. 
<laughs> and you, you'll keep it the rest of your life. Yes, I'll keep it the rest of my life. And so that'll be a really nice keepsake to have once my reign is over as well. Are, are all the crowns the same or are they unique to the particular queen? I There's been several crowns throughout the year, but I believe that this set is um, similar to what Brittany has had before. Mm -hmm. But um, other queens in the past, they've had different variations of the crown. All right. And I understand this is a heavy crown. Yes, it is. I haven't worn it yet. But I will find out. I got to hold it for the photos and pose with it, but I don't get officially crowned until tomorrow night. And is it, is it bad luck to put the crown on before you're actually queen, or is it considered just kind of like bad manners? Just bad manners, because yeah. Brittany's still the reigning queen. We want to respect her and respect her title, and so... It just makes it all that more exciting. I've got, I've gotten to hold it. I've gotten to see it, but I don't get to wear it until tomorrow night. <laughs> yeah. And, and when do you see your gown the first time? I saw the, my gown the first time, I believe, in July. I had to do my fittings um, fairly early. I go to school at the University of Alabama, so we had to fit everything in before I went back to college in yeah. August. My neighbor's kids went to Alabama. Awesome. It's a lovely school. I got very lucky to get a scholarship to go there, and I've had the best time the past four years. What are you studying? I graduated last year with my bachelor's in international relations with a focus in Eastern Europe and Russia, and they continued my scholarship for my master's program, and so currently Currently, I'm studying public administration. Oh, and what do you hope to do? I hope to work for the government. I was blessed to have an internship over the summer, and hopefully I will find a nice government job right out of college. Is that like <laughs> State Department stuff or what? State Department has always been my long-term goal. I've mm -hmm. always wanted to be a foreign service officer, hence why I studied Russian, not Russian, French, English. So working on trilingual, the Russian is not as fluent as I'd like it to be, but the long-term goal is to be a foreign service officer. What can you say in Russian? That has to do with apples. Anything? With apples? I don't know if I could say anything specifically about apples or that would make sense on air. I'll be honest. My fluency speaking is not great, but I can tell you hello where I study school. Oh, tell That's us in that. Russian where you study school. Stratsvutia, ya uchus v universitetia, Alabama. So that's just saying hello. I study at the University of Alabama. That's pretty good. Thank you. That's impressive. Yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> just triggered so many NSA algorithms. <laughs> <laughs> We've been flagged. <laughs> Putin sympathizers here on the show. Oh, my goodness. We're killing apples. We're, we're spelling up to Putin. What else is that? What does apple really mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's a code word for something, I'm sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, very good. So uh, tell me a little bit about the festivities and, and the whole night of, of crowning the new queen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, this evening is kind of the unofficial. Um, we have the gala, which is where Brittany, and I, I think she spoke about that with you all maybe earlier in the week, if not last week. Mm -hmm. um, and we, she gives her farewell. So it's kind of her build, bidding farewell to her year as Queen Pomona. Um, she will take her sash and crown off tomorrow night, and she will not be seen again in her crown. Then out of respect for Abigail, who becomes the new queen tomorrow night, so she is made elect. We don't even call her Queen Pomona until the end of the festival when she declares the festival to be started. Uh, which is tomorrow night after she's crowned she'll do a walk she'll go up and sit on stage um, and the uh, deputy assistant commissioner of agriculture uh, Amy Minor Richard will be here and she will um, declare the festival and that she is queen and then Abigail will open the festival in a response so then it's all official after that and we go to a grand ball so, yes very exciting yes. you haven't stopped smiling since you began hearing those words i'm guessing <laughs> yes i don't know i'm a very upbeat person i try to be as smiley as possible keep that's the good, good vibes going <laughs> yeah, that's very nice well good for you what Thank what you. kind of year will you have do you have any idea what activities are planned for you over the next 12 months once you become queen i really want to do a lot of community service with this title i love being involved with community i've worked with meals on wheels extensively Every year I've done a school tour, whether I have a title or not. So I would like to do a lot of outreach in the schools. My average is usually about a thousand kids a year that I'm able to visit. So I'd like to double that number this year and do mm -hmm. 2000. And then one of the goals that I had mentioned in my interview is that I'd like to take the Apple Harvest Festival beyond just West Virginia. Since I'm going to school in Alabama, I would love to do some outreach in the state of Alabama. I know they have agricultural festivals there mm -hmm. and do some outreach there and maybe do interviews with some of their other agricultural festivals. I know the city of Dothan has a peanut festival. I've been wanting to go to the peanut festival for the past three years. So I'd love to go to the peanut festival and talk to their peanut princess about apple harvest, about agriculture, and just really further the impact. You don't have peanut allergies, do you? I don't, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> My neighbor's kid has those. That's, that can be Ooh, serious rough. stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, is the 
queen of the festival typically a college-aged person or are they sometimes in high school still yeah so not always um mm-hmm. it really it could go either way so because 17 is the start you have to be mm-hmm. 17 by the the opening night of the festival mm-hmm. um so sometimes we have high school seniors mm-hmm. um but we also have seen college aged as well so a little bit of both okay mm-hmm. and are the cadets still a part of the whole ceremony they are yes so we started utilizing um the cadets from the berkeley county schools uh we work with um chief glazier out there he sends us an incredible group of young men each year we've worked with them this will be our third year um, and they uh, are very involved. They are at their beck and call all weekend, pulling mm-hmm. things from under the bus, loading things, holding dresses. Uh, they're outstanding young men. Do you know how long has it been since? It used to be Fork Union, I think. Was oh my the goodness! Cadets, right? so, how yeah, many years so has it, it been was, since? Um, oh my goodness. Ah, is it more than a decade? I'll tell you what. If Rhonda Gold was sitting here, she would tell you immediately. Um, it was Fort. Um, oh my. Did he just say the fort? Did he say it? Did he know it? I no, heard something I think he was, coming that direction. <laughs> um, oh my goodness! That's and our producer it's Colin. Drive me crazy now. Mm-hmm. I cannot remember. But we used um, previous to Berkeley County Schools. Mm-hmm. It was WVU or OTC. Yes. It was there with us for a little while. Mm-hmm. Um, and then prior to that, we also used um, one of the universities. And I, mm-hmm. I wish now, for the life of me, I cannot recall it. It's, okay. it's like right there. But um, yes, and that was back when I was on the court, which was years and years ago. So <laughs> um, a long time. Yes. Well, what kind of questions do you get asked that uh, enables you? to become selected as Queen Pomona? I was asked all about the agriculture industry and the state of West Virginia. By whom? By, there is a selected panel, and so I believe that's board members. Mm -hmm. It's all board members. Yes. Yes. Were you involved in that too, Courtney? Yes, I was. What kind of questions do you ask? So we want to know what they know about agriculture. Uh, We want to know about their community service. Um, We do look at their interview skills when they come in, just generally how are they speaking to us? What is their personality like? Are they smiling? Are they they happy? Are they not happy? Uh, You know, how are they just overall responding to the questions that we're asking them? Um, What's your favorite apple harvest memory if you have one? What would you do to bring um, commerce to our area with the apple harvest industry and promote the apple harvest industry? So lots of different questions that we ask them. The commissioner of agriculture is always one. So hint, hint, if you're going to apply <laughs> to be a court member, you need to know the, who the commissioner of agriculture is. So, yes. And he was kind enough to attend our political forum earlier this week on Tuesday. Very nice. Yeah, I just spoke with him on the phone yesterday. He's, I, I, I won't say his name in case there's anybody that hasn't studied for this exam. <laughs> But Kent Leonhardt is. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, right. um, yep. and, then, and how long is the interview? Um, so usually they are about 10 to 15 minutes long, and they will sit there with that panel and answer those questions. And then um, the board does not discuss the applicant. We mm-hmm. have a uh, sheet that we give a score um, from 1 to 10. And then what happens is once we are done with all of those interviews, we tabulate that each girl's highest score and each girl's lowest score gets knocked out. So um, there's really no way to uh, manipulate the system. Uh, It is a very fair system the way that we do it and all by interview, it's not a pageant. Um, And from that point then your highest is queen, the next two are maids and then it's princesses. And how many girls are usually considered for this interview? So we would have, well, considered for the interview, we'll take everyone that's in by the application deadline. So, you know, there are times that we we interview over 20 young ladies. Um, sometimes we've had, I think, upwards of 30 to interview. Um, we will take no more than 15, typically. Mm-hmm. How many did you, did you have this round? Um, so I can't say how many we had interviewing, but this year we ha- we selected nine to be on our court. Nine on the court. Mm-hmm. Yes. But you you won't tell me how many were considered. We will never court. say how many we cut um, out of fairness for mm-hmm. the individuals that are there. Now there's yes. a, there's an etiquette that takes place between the reigning queen mm-hmm. and the new queen in terms of when the reigning queen stops. Even though she's officially still queen, when uh-huh. the reigning queen stops wearing the crown and the sash, correct? Yes. That and is how correct. does that work? So tonight, after Brittany's farewell, she will um, give me her sash, and that will go into the coronation basket. Does it ever turn into a tug of war? Or- <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Brittany no. is so very polite. I do think she'll have a very teary goodbye speech, though, this evening. Um, but she will give me her sash. She keeps her crown, which we've already talked mm-hmm. about. Mm-hmm. That is actually a gift from the board. So we purchased that crown, and that is our gift to the, our queen. Um, 
and then from there she will do the prayer at the ladies brunch uh, on Friday tomorrow and um, then she will become a forever Queen Pomona uh, she will get to walk the stage we are honoring all of our past Queen Pomonas that um, you know we, we invited all of them to join us several of them are going to be there I think we have 11 forever Queen Pomonas joining us that will walk across the coronation stage so she will become one of those and then Abigail gets her crown at the coronation and from there on she will be the crown holder until she gives up her title so at the moment when abigail is elevated to queen pomona is Mm -hmm. somebody else then elevated to maid elect at at that moment no no so she is queen pomona until we do our interview process and our selection so we have our interview process in january i'm sorry we put our applications out in january we do the interview process in april or may and at that time we announce who our next maid elect okay so the court is not a line it's that's not... correct okay correct yes so um that it, now if there were a case where a queen could not fulfill her duties then the next in line which is a maid would step in to fulfill those duties so similar to the pageant world um because we always have a, a queen um mm-hmm. but we have not so there's a first runner that. up if not if not by name by then score. By, yes okay. Okay. yes correct have yes. we ever had to replace a queen we have not had to replace a queen thank goodness we have not had to have that happen. We have had a queen for two years because of COVID. Uh, Michaela recent, yeah. Dodson, mm-hmm. uh, she reigned as the 40th and the 41st due to COVID-19. Uh, but we have never had to remove a queen, thank goodness. Yeah, so does she get mm-hmm. kind of like special treatment as the two-year queen? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no special treatment. Um, mm-hmm. Just uh, bragging rights, I guess. <laughs> two years. She got two years. I'm also interested in this dress thing. Uh, yeah. is, that is, is That's such a me. man thing to say. I know, it is. I know. <laughs> This dress. <laughs> I, I, I've been trying to figure out how to say this. Right? Uh, is there a website where where people can go and see previous dresses? So we showcase our previous dresses at Ruby and Rhinestones. Uh, should a queen allow us to do so, we do ask our past queens if they are willing to allow us to showcase those gowns. So that there's a showcase there. Um, you can always go on and view past photos of our queens and their gowns, but uh, no, not per se. There's not really like a gown album. And you had no say in the design of the dress itself, or. Is- I had no input, but I do have to say, Miss Courtney knows what she's doing. She does an excellent job of finding a gown that really reflects personality. And that's what Brittany told me going into it, because I was a little scared, I'll say, because (laughs) I'm such a type A personality. It's like, I like to be in control of things sometimes, but it was such a good surprise. I was so excited because my dress really was a me dress. It was something I would have picked out and I feel like it really represented my personality so well. So, so. your preference for rubies over diamonds, for example, was respected <laughs> in, in? Yes, yes, all the preferences were respected. I didn't even have to convey those. Okay. She just, you know what you're doing and Thank it's you. so nice. And I was felt so blessed just having just such a good surprise. It really makes the experience more special just to have that element of surprise there and still having it feel like it's something that I would have picked out and I felt like I was represented in the ground. How old is this festival? Well, we're celebrating our 45th anniversary. So, and it, Winchester has the Apple Blossom Festival. Yep. I always tell people they celebrate the blossom, we celebrate the harvest. And is there mm-hmm. cooperation there? Is, is there? So you know, th- there's there's no affiliation. Okay. Um, what I say cooperation, there are several of our board members that um, you know assist with committees mm-hmm. for Apple Blossom as well. Um, yeah, Barbie Frankenberry is one mm-hmm. of those. I think she assists and serves mm-hmm. for some. There are horticulture ladies luncheon maybe Um, so there are a few that have some affiliations to the apple blossom festival Mm -hmm. and some deep roots there as well so um, but yeah there's no affiliation essentially between the two Mm -hmm. so i'm looking at your website here there's a lot of pancakes are going to be consumed over the weekend oh my goodness have you been to our pancake breakfast i have not i'm not a pancake breakfast kind of guy but it's um Um, i see a lot of apple pies being consumed (laughs) i am an apple pie kind of guy so that is yes (laughs) so there's the apple pie option Mm -hmm. um the public can actually purchase the apple pies that went into the competition those are submitted tomorrow for judging um but i will tell you if you're not a pancake person there's plenty of sausage hash brown casserole okay. and baked apples okay. in that mm-hmm. breakfast so something to consider i've purchased mm-hmm. one of the pies in the past because you know the, the ones that the top pies can go for some pretty good money oh yes mm-hmm. uh, but the other pies you can get for five dollars or so and i, I so back in the 90s i remember covering the apple pie baking contest and when i was leaving i thought 
five dollars for a pie even in 1990 <laughs> whatever it was it, that wasn't that mm -hmm. much money for a yeah. pie and it was yeah. a heck of a good pie these are homemade pies they and they're homemade pies yes. uh, yeah they're amazing can mm -hmm. we all agree that the perfect apple pie tilts toward tart instead of sweet can we agree on this <laughs> I want, the, I want I'm the queen's sweet, opinion. I'm a sweet, I'm a sweet apple pie. Okay, all right, <laughs> Sorry. All right, all right, all right. You're getting outvoted. I'm done with all of you. So, okay, I, wait a minute. So you like a tart apple pie. Do you have to have ice cream to balance that out or just a tart Ice apple cream pie? always helps. No, I, don't, I don't mean like pucker you up kind of tart, right? <laughs> but, but just the overly sweet, I don't, yeah. I don't like. Well, they say that the best kind of apple pie actually is a mixture of different apples mm -hmm. in it. So it's mm -hmm. not one apple type. It's a variety of apple types that makes the perfect pie. I think it's the hardest pie to make well. Because, yeah. because there's a lot of mm -hmm. different factors that go in you, the crust, the top crust, uh -huh. the bottom crust, yes. and then of course the apple filling in, in there, and mm -hmm. the, how, the sweetness, you're right. If it's yeah. too sweet, mm -hmm. it's just too much. Yeah. But if it's too tart, then you know. Yes. Yikes. How much, yes. Imagine how much better this segment would have been had if they had, had brought pie. samples of, <laughs> of apple pie. Yeah. Next year. That would have been <laughs> apple pie samples. <laughs> that would have been great. Well, that would have been great. Uh, my daughters actually um, just they baked their apple pies last night to submit. Uh, their, oh, nice. Yes, their 4 H club. That and, really does not help uh, me at I'm all. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's waiting for judging. You should become a judge. Where, you put your name in. Where is that going to be, by the way? I think Bill Stubblefield was an apple pie judge yeah. a couple years ago. Yeah, so they take them to the fairgrounds for submission. To yes. the fairgrounds. And that's no more. Will they, mm -hmm. When will they do the actual judging in the contest? The judging, oh, I want to say it is from 10 to 1 tomorrow. 10 to 1. I, I'm pretty sure, mm -hmm. unless the drop-off is from 10 to 1 and the judging is at 1. It's very possible. Forgive me for not. It's on the website. Either way, website at, at some point after <laughs> 1, the pies will be available to purchase. So they will be available at the craft and vendor fair, mm -hmm. which will be Saturday and Sunday at the fairgrounds. Saturday? Yes. Okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. And you know, our president was actually the very first apple pie contest winner. Who? Mm -hmm. Susan Snowden. Mm -hmm. Well, she didn't mention that when she was here this week. She's the very first. Yes. She was here earlier in the week. She never mentioned that. I'm going to have to say something to her. She was the very first winner. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yes. Well, another yeah. thing about Susan. Yeah. Fascinating so she, person. We'll have to have her bring you an apple pie. Yes. Well, I'm glad uh, she's probably thinking. Thank you for volunteering. She's probably to bake an thinking, apple pie. really, Courtney. You just volunteered, volunteered me to, to bring an apple, apple pie. pie. <laughs> yeah. And she did too. Yeah. So let's go, Susan. You gotta come through. All right. So uh, only about two minutes left. Uh, tell me what this whole experience has been like for you to this point so far, Abby. This has really meant a lot to me. Like I've said previously, I have spent my whole life involved with the Apple Harvest Festival, and at no point did I. If you would have asked me when I was a junior maiden, I would have never thought that I would be made elect or be considered for Queen Pomona. And my dad really vouched for me to join in the process. He's like, you never know, you never know what can happen. And I'm so glad he talked to me into it because it's really made it feel like a full circle moment that I'm able to finish with the court mm -hmm. uh, just like I started with. And it just meant so much to me and to my family. And I'm just so excited. I don't think like the reality has hit yet that I'm going to be crowned tomorrow night. So I, it's going to feel so surreal tomorrow. I'm just so excited and I just feel so blessed to be able to be made elect and to be able to represent this festival. And, and how old were you when you were first on the court? I was first on the court, I believe, when I was five years old. Oh, my goodness. Yes. <laughs> that's awesome. Court jester. Court jester, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Well, you know what? That's great that it went to someone like you who can really appreciate mm -hmm. the meaning of it. And, thank you and that's awesome so congratulations to you thank you yes you went from the queen is coming to literally the queen is here yes yeah. that's pretty cool yes right. <laughs> and uh courtney mm -hmm. uh this, this is a week long uh almost two weeks long really now from mm -hmm. what it's become yes uh and it just means so much to the community and people come from all over the place to be a part of it and that must just yes. be great to know that you're a part of what makes this community special yes i um became a court member years ago as we already <laughs> said and won't say when i was on the court but um i absolutely Absolutely love to be able to give back to that and now share that with my family it's very special um, to our community and um, I just I really love like Abigail said to see it come mm -hmm. kind of full circle you serve as a court member mm -hmm. you start volunteering you're invited to be on the board you're selected to be on the board and now you get to help in this capacity and it just feels great yeah. well good for both of you thank you and for all you folks who do so much hard work to pull this off every year thank you. Uh, where can we get the magazines um, so those are all over um, the county. BCT has those in every branch. You'll be able to get them at most of the events as well um, this week. And Jordan and Hess also has those specifically. Enjoy your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for having me.